is week number three of Pentecost. Today, we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's about being clothed with power from on high. It's about receiving a heavenly prayer language. <laughs> Hey everybody, we want to welcome you all back to week three of our series on the Holy Spirit. So far, we've answered the questions of who the Holy Spirit is and what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is. And today, we go a step further and we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is for anyone who has already received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And when the believers prayed on the day of Pentecost, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues or a heavenly language as the Spirit enabled them. This is something that we should all ask God for. It will change your life more than anything that you've ever, ever experienced. Well, Pastor Ed will be back to share all about this in a really cool way. That's coming up shortly, but right now, it's time to get our praise on and worship the Lord. Stand up with us and sing. Change your destinies. You're here. 
VBS is coming up this week. Be sure to join us for tons of fun. Coming soon, both VBS. Instead of bringing your kids to VBS, let's bring VBS to your kids. But we're not finished yet. Help kids understand what it means to listen to, focus on, and follow Jesus. A stands for Advent. Bible stories. They were afraid that they were about to become fish food. Games. Do you understand the rules? Yes, ma'am! Origami crafts. The first half of the flower complete. Powerful teaching. Proverbs 3. Great music. I'm a, I'm a wave rocker. Get ready for Bolt VBS. What is the for Bolt VBS online? All the details are at kistownet.com. Boop! Pastor Takeith and Michelle with an important announcement. For the last three months, we've had Kids Town and all activities only online. But soon, that is coming to an end. We want to let you know that we will be starting a phased-in approach to opening up our in-person children's ministries. So get ready for some great times ahead. And when we open, we are going to have certain guidelines that we all must follow to make this happen. When you check in to any of our children's ministries, you will need to wash your hands with sanitizer and have your temperature checked. Hmm. And if you are sick, or you've been sick in the last two weeks, please do not join the in-person services until you are sure you are all better. Starting in the next couple of weeks, we will have Kids Town for Praise Team and Serve Team families only. But starting July 1st, we will be open to everybody, and we look forward to seeing you then. So please know that our staff will adhere to strict guidelines to keep you and us safe, and we ask that you help us with all of that. If your parents are not ready for you to come back, that's okay. We just want you to know that we're ready whenever you're ready. You know, Impact Girls and Royal Rangers will also be fully open in July as well. The best is yet to come, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but speaks to God. First Corinthians 14, 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but speaks to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but speaks to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Well, hi there. I'm Pastor Ed Corbin. And remember, you can call me Pastor Ed. And I'm back today to continue talking with you about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. In order for us to talk about the Holy Spirit, we must look into the Word of God and see what the Bible says about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I'll be reading some scriptures today, so you might want to have your Bible nearby, all right? We were talking last time about 
how there is a purpose to the Holy Spirit. He does things in our lives. And we mentioned several of the things he did, like convict us and teach us and guide us and comfort us. And I want to share one more with you right now. One of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is that he would give us power. He would empower us. Uh, I'm holding something in my hands that's rather unusual. It is a shirt. And this shirt is a very dressy shirt, and it comes from the country of Nigeria. It is made of velvet, and it is considered very dressy clothing. I've been to Nigeria several times. Remember, I told you I was a missionary to South Africa for over 20 years. So I made trips here to Nigeria and was given one of these beautiful robes. You know, when I put on this robe, I feel like I'm really dressed up. Have you ever been dressed up? Have you ever put on really nice clothes like you would wear to a wedding or a special party? Have you ever gone and looked at yourself in the mirror and thought to yourself, oh my, I look so good. I mean, look at Pastor Ed today. He's got on a show coat. It's a bright gold and black. And, and when I looked at myself, I thought, wow, I look like I'm ready to put on a show. I feel good about myself. There's just something about clothing that makes you feel different about yourself. Did you know the Bible talks about this? Yes, it does. Look with me to Luke chapter 24 and verse number 49. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When we get dressed up, we just feel good. We feel like, wow, I could, I could just accomplish anything today. That's a feeling that builds us up, makes us feel powerful. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes and he clothes us with power. Well, why does he want to give us power? He has told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So how are we going to be witnesses everywhere in the world without the power of the Holy Spirit? As a matter of fact, he said that he would give us this power to evangelize everywhere. That's why I became a missionary. So I needed the power of God to be able to go to South Africa and to talk to the children there about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And so one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is to give us power. Now, we've talked about five different purposes of the Holy Spirit, so now I give you number six, which will be the last one. Have you noticed my little friend sitting over here? Yeah, he's just been waiting his turn. For you see, this friend of mine has a really big mouth. <laughs> Do you see that? Look how big his mouth is. There's a Bible verse that talks about speaking, and I want to share that with you right now. It's Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4, and one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is to give us our prayer language, to speak with other tongues. So that means we must open our mouth and speak and out come words in the Holy Spirit that come direct from God. Acts 2 and verse number 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So I taught you earlier about how they waited together in Jerusalem and in came the sound like a rushing mighty wind. In came the fire that set on their heads. But then also there came a language for they began to speak in tongues and languages they had never spoken in before. It was all brand new and it was words from the Holy Spirit. So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, 
God will give you your very own prayer language, words He will give you that you will pray to Him. And even though you do not understand these unusual words that you've never heard before, God understands the words. He gives you the words. So when you pray in these words, your prayers are perfect. They're wonderful prayers. And so we're able to pray for things that we don't even know anything about. When I pray in my language, which is English, I can only pray about things I know about. So if someone's sick, I can pray for them in English. But then I grow weary and I run out of things to say in my language. And then I begin to stumble and wonder what should I say next. When I pray in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit, out come words from God that I don't have to think about. They come out of my spirit. And I can pray about things that are on my heart, things that God brings to my mind. I can pray about things I don't know anything at all about because God allows me, enables me to pray in the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit does many things for us, so many things. I've only talked to you about six. But we are focusing in on one thing in particular in everything that I'm teaching you. And that is that Pentecost is about speaking with other tongues. Speaking with other tongues in your prayer language is the evidence or the proof that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's let my little friend rest. Let's see if we can set him right back down there again. There he goes. I think he's, he's rested there. Oh, praying in your prayer language is the most wonderful thing in all the world. It is special prayer. You might say, well, Pastor Ed, what's so special about praying in a prayer language? Well, I'm going to share that with you right now. I'm going to give you some ideas about why it is so special. And in so doing, I'm going to use this beautiful flower bush right here to help me represent what I'm talking about to you. First of all, when you speak in your prayer language or in tongues, you speak to God. You speak to God. So I'm going to pluck one of the flowers and I'm going to hold it here. We're going to let this represent speaking to God. The scripture is found in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but speaks to God. So when we pray words that we don't understand and that we don't know, and that other people don't understand and they don't know, those words are being spoken to God. So it doesn't matter if a person can understand the words or if I can understand the words because I'm not praying to myself. I'm not praying to a person. I'm praying to God. And so the words in my tongue are meant to help me speak to God. Now, that's a wonderful thing. And you see, God understands all the words because he's the father of those words. So when he puts those words in your mind, in your spirit, so that you can speak them out to him, those words which come from him are understood by him. So he actually inspires your prayer. So your prayer is actually a perfect prayer. And so one of the reasons why praying in tongues is so special is because praying in our prayer language is praying directly to God. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flower and I'm going to put it right here onto our cross. Now I'm going to look over at my beautiful flower bush and I'm going to pull off another flower. And we're going to let this represent another special thing about praying in the Spirit.
The second thing is, when you speak in tongues, you do not understand what you are saying, nor does anyone else. So there are some that are confused by this. They say, well, why would I want to pray in tongues? Because I don't understand what I'm saying. Well, in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it says, Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. And so people don't understand you. You're uttering, you're saying a mystery that comes out of your spirit. And so when it comes out of your spirit and it's a mystery, it's not meant for other people to understand it. So don't be concerned about that. Don't say, oh, no, I don't want to pray in tongues because I don't understand what I'm saying and no one else understands what I'm saying. So what good could it be? No, it's coming out of your spirit, not out of your mind. If it came out of your mind, it could only be English or Spanish or whatever language you speak in your home. That's all that could come out of your mind. But coming out of your spirit come the words of God. And it begins to come out of you spontaneously. It's actually a miracle how all of this works. God gives the words. We say them. Out come mysteries. No one understands. And that's okay because our prayers are directed to God. So that's another reason why this is so very special. There it is. Now, let's move on. Let's reach over here and let's pluck out another bloom. Ah, uh, here's one. This one reminds me of 1 Corinthians 14.4. It says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies, can you say that? Edifies. Edifies himself. When you speak in an unknown tongue, you edify edify yourself. Well, my name is Ed, and this word is edify. Is it like Pastor Edify? <laughs> no, that's not it at all. To edify means to build yourself up. How many of you enjoy being built up? You know, when somebody says, oh, you're very handsome, you're very beautiful, well, that builds you up. When someone says, oh, you look good today, well, that builds you up. When someone says, oh, I'm so proud of you for making those excellent grades on your schoolwork. Well, that builds you up. And so when you pray in a tongue, you are built up. You are edified. And that is a wonderful thing that happens when we pray in the Spirit. So, let me pull off another bloom. Here it comes. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So when you pray in tongues, you are praying out of your spirit, not out of your mind. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Well, that's okay, because we're building ourselves up. We don't understand it all, but it's good, and it has a wonderful outcome. So let me take this now and place it right here on our cross. There we go. All right. Let me reach over here and pull off another one. And this is what I'm reminded of. When you pray in tongues, you can pray to interpret your prayers. This is what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 14, 13. It says, for this reason, anyone who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may be able to interpret what he says. So I've been talking all about how we don't understand what we're saying. You can pray to interpret what you are saying. So isn't that good? You can say, God, help me understand. And there will be occasions when God will actually allow you to understand what it is you're talking about. And if you have a need on your heart and you want to pray over that, but use your prayer language, you can pray over that need with your prayer language and your prayer will go out about the need that is on your heart. So you can pray to interpret. 
So let me put this one up here on the very top. Let me reach over here and now and take this one. When you pray in your prayer language, you can pray for specific things by focusing on those things in your mind while you pray. I just mentioned that just now. You can, you can pray to interpret what you're saying, but what you can do is, if you have a prayer need, like my grandmother's really sick, and I want to pray for her, but I want to pray in my prayer language. With that need in your mind, you just pray in tongues, thinking about the need, and as you think about the need, focusing on it, the words that come out of your mouth, even though you don't understand them, they are words of prayer about the need. So you can pray on things, issues, that you think about while you pray in the Holy Spirit. So let me place this one up here just now. Wow, it's looking beautiful, isn't it? I have one left. It's right here. Let's see what this one says. Tongues then are assigned not for believers, but for unbelievers. And so many things that happen in our church services happen for believers, people that love Jesus and, and serve Jesus. But there is one thing in particular that happens for those who don't know Jesus, and it is tongues. When they hear a person pray in tongues, they know, wow, this is really unusual. I've never heard of that before. You know, and so it's a sign to someone who does not yet believe on Jesus. And so now we have plucked all of the blossoms off of our bush. Everything is so beautiful. And I'm here to tell you that if you will be baptized in the Spirit and begin to speak with other tongues, your life will begin to be fruitful. Out of you will come blossoms of blessings. Your life will produce fruit if you will use the gift of God, which is speaking with other tongues. And so today I encourage you to be filled with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my friend. Give them understanding to receive from you this gift of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And may they know that they've received because they will speak with other tongues. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, bye-bye. Be here with your prayer.
We've had a great time today learning all about this wonderful thing called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It is something we all should desire for God to give us. Now, I know many of you already have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, either here in Kids Town, Kids Camp, Pow Wow, Powette. If you've experienced it, you know it's a wonderful thing to have in your life. And if you have yet to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to keep praying and keep asking God for this incredible gift. God is faithful and he desires all of us to have it. Don't forget about our both VBS this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You can register your family at kidstownet.com and all the information is right there. Invite your neighborhood friends to join you. They will love it. And you can also pick up a BBS kit here at church, or you can download everything from our website. All you need is some paper for the origami crafts. I also want you to take some pictures and send them to me at pastorkeithburrows at gmail.com. Let's have a great week in BBS. And just before we go, we want to remind you, the, the best, best is yet, yet to come. come.